people have landed across the Mediterranean on Italy's shores this year, many of them, of course, coming through that little island of Lampedusa. Uh, that's up from 88,000 last year. That poses Georgia Maloney a huge problem. She was elected. She was elected saying, look, you know, we can deal with this problem. Now, she's met. She's met with Eddie Rami, who is the prime minister of Albania, and done a deal with Albania. And the deal is that they can send 3,000 people a month, that's 36,000 people a year, across to Albania, where they will be processed. And if they're granted asylum, they can come to Italy. If they're not, they'll be sent back to their home countries. All of which, I'm guessing, is music to the ears of Paolo Boccia, Italian MEP for the Lega Party, who joins me live down the line from Vincenza. And this is what the Lega have been campaigning for, isn't it? Yes, uh, that's uh, what we were voted by our electors. I think that uh, after a long period with uh, huge pressures on the uh, Mediterranean side, finally we, we, we were able to, to find a common sense solution in order to externalize procedures for asylum seekers in order to, to know in a clear way who is uh, seeking for uh, uh, better wages or maybe for uh, better protection from uh, uh, European uh, member states' welfare systems and people that are uh, running out from uh, conflicts, from wars. So yeah, I mean, I get, uh, this is a good, a good idea, but... Uh, Paolo, I get, I, the, I get the logic. I get the logic of what you're saying, but here's the problem. 3,000 a month, when over 10,000 a month are arriving, I mean, you're, you're only... Oh, he's gone. There we are. <laughs> the wonders of modern science, eh? Yeah. Uh, now, I'm also joined by Professor Leila Simona Talani, Director of the Centre for Italian Politics at King's College London. Let's begin, uh, Leila, with the politics of this. Uh, you know, that's the Lega, who've always had a very tough position on this. The Brothers of Italy have sprung up with arguably an even tougher position on this. Maloney becomes the Prime Minister promising she'll do something. So in a sense, she had to do something. Well, definitely she had to do something because the situation was out of control, as you said at the beginning. Yeah. If you have doubled the number of migrants that were shoring on the Italian uh, coastline, is actually a problem, especially if you are very much against migration. So in a way, this deal, which is actually second to another deal they've already done with Tunisia and it didn't end up particularly well, is like uh, the admission of a failure that, that is Italy is unable at the moment to deal with with this uh, number of migrants. Yes. yes, it's dealing with the symptom, not the cause. It's dealing, and, and, yes. and I do fully understand that. However, the numbers, are, the numbers are, I mean, they're reasonably impressive. I mean, we had a Rwanda deal, or we still do, and we're yes, waiting for a Supreme Court judgment. But, our, you know, that was nothing like 3,000 people a month. That, we were talking hundreds. But there's yes. a very big difference here, isn't there, in a sense? There are some differences. I'm totally sure that Miss Meloni, she took, a, she took some um, lead from the UK, because she obviously has been talking with, uh, uh, with your Prime Minister about yeah. it. But th there are many differences. The most important one is that basically uh, the, the, the refugees or wannabe refugees that will arrive in Albania, then they'll have uh, their application process there, but then they will be allowed to come back to the EU, uh, to, to Italy uh, to, uh, to stay as refugees if their application is uh, accepted, whereas in the case of Rwanda it is different because the refugees who are not allowed to enter and to ask for the refugee status in the UK will have to go back to, to go to Rwanda and stay in Rwanda, will never yes. be accepted and by the UK. Why, that's why the government have had such problems Absolutely. with the European Court of Human Rights and indeed the British courts interpreting it. So I yes. wonder, I wonder with this deal where the Italian Navy, or an equivalent, will pick up boats in the Mediterranean, in Italian waters, take them straight to a port in Albania, because that's the plan. That's the plan. As it's been hatched, processing there, and then if they pass, they come to Italy. If they, now, if they, if they don't, they get sent back to their home countries. Uh, but there's a problem 
with that, if they haven't got any ID because they've thrown it in the Mediterranean, where do you send them? Well, uh, there are many problems with the deal. Some, um, this is one of the problems. Repatriation is one of the problems. So they are sent to uh, a new center. It's called the reception center, more or less always in Albania, because they made a deal for two centers, yep. one for the processing of the, of the applications, another one to reception for those who are waiting to be repatriated. The problem is, they, according to the deal, this is under the Italian law. And that's very difficult and debatable, because we have extraterritorial for the Italian law, but the refugee law is not Italian, it's actually European law. You've got, so, you, you, so you're going to have to fight. You may not have as, as big a problem with the European Court of Human Rights as we had, but you're going to have a huge problem a huge with problem. the EU's common asylum policy. Absolutely, because this is a common policy and there is extra, yeah. extra territoriality for the EU law. It doesn't exist, or at least it's not been. It might exist, but it has to be negotiated with the EU. And this has not been done because this deal is apparently just landed on the desk see, of the European Commission. What's interesting about this? Yeah is Maloney was elected and, oh, she's going to be so tough, she's going to fight Brussels. But actually, mm. she's been pretty emollient towards Brussels thus far. Is this the moment which she stands and fights? Well, that's very much to be seen. As we are very much at the beginning of this process. Yeah. So, the, the, as I said, the, the EU had just received the memorandum. No one has seen the memorandum. No one has... They have been looking for it online, but they couldn't find it. Then there is the issue that basically this is also a way to take away the attention of the Italian public from the current budgetary law, which is incredibly more austere and actually more draggy-like than any one was expecting and so and so well she's turned out to be a very much more moderate prime minister in many ways in many ways in a, i think this is not necessarily a bad thing but definitely for her for her electorates is not exactly what they were expecting no i think a lot of her electors thought she'd be a lot tougher and a lot more difficult yeah, yeah. and have, have her poll rating suffered as a result of all of this not really not at the moment but the budgetary law is a turning point i would say and it really depends on how it goes um, of course it's gone through a, a mechanism which is the the, it was immediately given the confidence vote by the parliament, yeah. but still uh, the uh, application has to happen. So we will see what happens. I have to say, Leila, you've got a great job. Thank Being you. a professor of Italian politics, it's the most extraordinary <laughs> subject. Thank you for joining us on the programme. Thanks. I sat and worked with Italian MEPs for almost 21 years. I have to tell you, it was virtually impossible. Uh, it makes British politics look really very straightforward and very easy, especially on days like today where we've had the King's speech. And I bet that one man that absolutely loved the pomp and ceremony, well, he's sitting right next to me now, and it's Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg.